guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Corruption Conversations. My name is Patience Hello Zira Ismaila. I'm the project coordinator, but you can call me Zira at Akin Friday Foundation. With me here is Jerry Mate McKee, and Jerry Mate McKee is a program officer legal at Akin Friday Foundation. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you very much, and it's good to be here, and I hope we have very interesting, engaging discussions today on corruption, especially in the judiciary and the legal system of Nigeria. So I look forward to having a nice time here. Today we have an exciting topic, which is the prevalence of corruption, especially in the judicial and legal system, just like Jerry has previously said. I really am curious to find out, like, what ways is the judiciary corrupt and in what ways does corruption thrive in such an atmosphere because i feel like the judicial system is a place where you're supposed to have like that peace of mind where you have a case you go there and everything yeah. gets you get justice in the judicial system i mean in a in a seemingly um, smooth system that's how it should be well i am hearing otherwise what do you think happens what do you think causes corruption mm. in the judicial system so this is this is very broad and okay let yeah. me just like I, uh, I would always say, we we'll keep on hearing things like the judiciary being the last hope of the common man. Yeah. But as it is right now, yeah, the common, the last hope of the common man is actually God. Yeah. And this is because I mean you find a lot of rot in the system, and that that belief that when I go to the courts to seek redress and to get justice. The feeling of once I go to the court, I would get justice is not there again, and this is because so many things are now happening in our judicial system, yeah. and it's impeding the dispensation of justice to litigants and to persons who have gone to court to seek redress. So for me, now this is in twofold. I would say first of all, we have corruption in the judiciary, and secondly, I would say delay in dispensing justice okay so um starting with uh, the delay of no i'll i'll start with um corruption, corruption in of, the of, yeah, in the yeah and i want to give an example during my time when i i, I spent over, over five years in the judiciary and i saw a lot of things i again i now found out that as a judge you have the, the fate of so many persons are in your hand, they are your pen. Yeah. So if you go in today and sit down, take your pen and give judgment against somebody who you should have given judgment in his or her favor, then it means you have destroyed that person's life and you don't even know how much ex have you. You don't know to what extent you have gone in damaging that person's hope in the country and, and the person as well. Exactly. So you find uh, um, at times in the court, you find people coming in to say, okay, we want to just meet you, we want to greet you, we want to just offer you ah, a token. From the, from the back door. Yes. Yeah. And then that money is offered to you as a judge. You collect the money. And then a week later or a month later, the person who, gives, who, who gave you that money, sorry, yeah. comes back and say. Oga, I have a case in your court, and the judgment comes up, of course, tomorrow. You remember that last week or last month, yeah, you came here to greet you. So your hands are tied, and you are torn between doing what's right and also pleasing somebody who has given you money again. So these are the things that judges deal with, and in some cases also, court registrars, court beliefs. Yeah. Those ones, that's only a different uh, talk entirely. Yeah. But my point here is that you have persons in the system who have been put there by the government to do what's right. But because of corruption, they end up doing exactly what, they end up doing the opposite of what they were employed or appointed 
So you're do. saying in this part, when you were talking about the judiciary and corruption in the judiciary, one major uh, factor is the fact that money is passing through hands. Yes. And so I feel like, in my opinion, if that is a major problem, and we're highlighting it as we go on, if we create a channel where people do not have access to the judges, any judge that collects money for any given reason, which is outside their salary, outside their regular payments, should actually face the law as well. Of course, of course, of course, yes, yes, true. And that's why we always advocate, let's, let's reduce the contact between people and, I'm talking of people now in terms of public, office, uh, public officers yeah. and Nigerians who are going to institutions for one thing or the other. So if you reduce the contact between, let's say, a court registrar, a court baby, yeah. and make everything, um, uh, use the technology to, to revamp the system, there is no way a computer will ask you for money. Yeah. There is no way a phone or a laptop or a site will ask you for money. Anyone that is being asked for, you would get a receipt for the payments. So you can always for. trace why the money was paid. You yeah. understand? Now, second, on the other hand, I was talking of delayed justice. I, I will give you an analogy. Okay. Let's say, for example, now I, 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 I stole your money. Mm -hmm. And you take me to the courts. Please don't steal my money, Jerry. I won't steal your money. <laughs> just for example. Okay, yeah. So sure. I, I stole your money and then you take me to your magistrate's court. Yeah. And for whatever reasons, reason being that, okay, let's say I have the I have the might to get the best lawyers. I could call a judge and get judgment in my favor. And for whatever reasons it is, I got judgment against you who went to the court to sue me. Yeah. Now, you want to appeal to the High Court, right? Yeah. Because you feel injustice has been yes. had, had, yeah. had taken place. Yeah. Now, between the Magistrate Court and the High Court, you will spend as much as two and a half years, three years, wow. before you won't get any justice either for you or against you. Now, you go to the High Court, you spend another two, three years. Let's maybe at the High Court level, you won the judgment, yeah, and then I lost, yeah. Of course, I would appeal. And you go to the next level to the appeal court, and at the appeal court, let us say we maybe at the appeal court, I won, you lost, yeah. You would not go to the supreme court. So at the end of the day, it just goes, it keeps so rotating. From the magistrate so level time. to the supreme court, you will end up spending as much as seven to nine years. Now yeah, I will ask you the question: crazy. that amount of money now, how much was involved? 1M was stolen from you by yeah. myself. Yeah. By the time you have spent nine years going to the court, what's yeah. the value of the 1M that I stole from you? It reduces value because by the time you even start paying for so many processes you and pay, spending you, you so much lawyers, time, so you're, you're spending your filing time. Filing fees. Yes. So you see that in the end, justice delayed is now justice denied. True. Because even if at the Supreme Court, I am asked to pay you. Mm -hmm. How much will one M? Like what? What's the value of the one M? I'm, uh, I'm paying you back. So I wouldn't even want to go through this hectic process. I would just want to like leave it to God, like you said, because at the end of the day, let's assume this is someone who just has that one million that you have stolen. Assuming I just have one millionaire and you steal one millionaire from me, it means that I don't even have the power or the capacity to of go course. to the courts. Of because course. I'm going to, you can easily say, take me to court. Because you know that the justice is going to be denied. Yeah, because I'm not going to be able to afford it. You have my one million, and you probably have other people's one million that you've amassed. And at the end of the day, justice is not served. So how does the common man find that kind of, like, how do we um, correct this mistake? Because at the end of the day, if people go to court and they can't find um, justice, yes. then what's, what's the point, point of going in the really? first place? So a lot of times we're going to be having people being denied of their rights, people yes. being um, oppressed, and people feeling like they don't have anybody to report to. True. And you know that is one of the major reasons why Akin Family Foundation created this app, which is called the Flag It app. And then the Flag It app is meant to help you report and document crimes that have been done against you or even someone else. Exactly. If you've witnessed a crime, you can actually report this. And when you report this, it would be sent through the app to relevant authorities. You can actually download this app on um, your Google Play Store or your Apple Play Store as well but the truth is we all need to have our hands on deck 
for this uh, corruption to end, especially in the judicial system. Mm -hmm. Because the judiciary, I believe, is supposed to be independent. It's not supposed to have access to um, people coming in and coming out to, um, what do they call it, to manipulate the outcomes. So we will talk more about this after the break. Thank you so much for staying tuned. You see, I don't pity those corrupt officials. Uh. They are terrible. All, in go -go -go. All of them are tea. It's those small, small corruption that is killing this country. Benny, oh Benny. Mm. Ah, it's true. Ah. Greetings to you, sir. Greetings, my brother. From the power company. I discover you connected illegally. Uh, it's not only me. Oh, me? Even Baba Femi here. He is connected indirectly. Even with our prepared meter, he connected indirectly. That is even more. He is connected indirectly. No, no. Uh, it is wrong to connect electricity illegally. Young man, I have a son like you. Eh? Bah, la You are not supposed to offer me bribe. Bribery is corruption. Not in my country. Daniel, take off the light. Yeah. Corruption not in my country. A new government is one thing, a changed people is another. A new government does not guarantee a great nation. Play your parts today. Welcome back, guys. We've been having an amazing conversation uh, with Jerry, our legal expert here at Akinfari Foundation. And we've been talking about corruption in the judicial system. And we know that now, I know of somebody that I've heard about that stayed in prison for stealing as little as i think five thousand can you imagine and this guy imagine? had been in prison for like five years the case had not been like justice had been delayed and at the same time like you said it had been denied event i think it was kiri kiri or where and was if, it if you would check it now the 5k he stole yeah. if you look at the laws now that should punish him for that 5k he has even spent he has, he has overspent the number ah. of years. So he has, he has credits, like the law is owing him. Yeah, so the years he can never go and steal again and then come one, back one, and say, Oh, I've already spent five years minus the two. Uh, minus the two. Yes. Next year, I'll do again. I can minus. Steal again. I mean, so, it's, it's, so, it's so sad, it's so embarrassing. What do we need to do? I mean, like, generally, not just like an um, individual, like individuals, basically, and even. um governments and even organizations, how can we put our hands on deck to actually make sure that um, the judicial and legal system is corruption-free because that should be possible, right? So for me, first of all, like I said earlier, is the independence of the judiciary. The judiciary has to be independent, one, and they must be seen to be independent, secondly. Now, so before you appoint a judge, for instance, yeah. You have to take his name to the state house of assembly for the state level and the national assembly for the national level. For me, I think we should also have a look at this. We should have an independent body that will screen persons who are supposed to handle cases of corruption in this country. Now, far beyond the president or the state governor yeah. appointing judges. We should have uh, we should have private bodies. Let's say like the uh, MBA, the Nigerian Bar Association. We should have EFCC. We should have ICPC. All embedded in this body that would sit down and uh, and vet the appointment of persons who would be judges tomorrow, so that you are sure that persons who are going to these uh, offices yeah. are people of credible character yeah. and we can also trace their background to see that. If not had an issue of corruption hands are whatsoever, clean. yes. So you're basically so, talking about a check and balance system. Exactly. Where we make sure that the people we're putting in place to actually yes. represent people who need, like defending the defenseless. True. You need to have people that have the people at heart. Exactly. And you said, I know we have been talking about previously before um, this episode, we talked about behavioral change. Yeah. How does that impact um, corruption? And how does it help us to knowledge of behavioral change? I believe, how does it help impact ending corruption? Option. And I think that's why we are having this discussion. Yeah. Today. So, as against just saying, if you are caught stealing, we punish you. If you are caught stealing, we go, you go to jail for five years. Yeah. Let us start inculcating the habits, the character of 
starting with ourselves. If you say the, the judiciary is corrupt, how about yourself as a Nigerian? Do you beat traffic lights uh, when you're in the haste? Uh, do you do you I'm do you sure bribe? a lot of you are on that table. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you give bribe in the banking hall just to jump queue? So we have to start speaking to ourselves first and let the change start with us before taking it outside. So we need to start having this this talk about let me be the change I want to see in my country. So there you have it. I, I, I actually truly believe in this. If everybody takes responsibilities for their action, yes. believing that I cannot be engaging in corrupt practices, I will not be a part of this. It means that clearly when you now have people like the judges and you have people like um, whoever it is that would be in the court and be in position to actually preside over a case, you wouldn't find corrupt people when you yourself, even as a judge, as an individual, yeah. you already have a belief that I will not engage in such practices. Yes. But we need to advocate more. And that is the reason and why we're having a corruption conversation Again. because if you and I understand that we need to, the change begins with us, it means that you're not looking over your shoulder and thinking that, oh, okay um, he or she needs to set things right, the government, the government, this cliche of the government, the government no, like, we are the government we are, we are like the the, of the people, for yeah. the people, by the people. That's democracy. You, that's democracy. We're operating in a democratic um, system. And so we need to be sure of the fact that our hands are clean. Because the truth is, are your hands clean? Because before you start removing the log of wood from your neighbors, I tell yeah, you, you remove that eyes from your eyes so that you will see road very well. So I believe that um, these processes should be put in place. We as individuals should play our part. Government should play the part. Institutions, private institutions should also, civil society organizations should also play their part in making sure that we eradicate corruption, True. especially in the judicial system. True. It has been an amazing yes, session with engaging, you, Jerry. Engaging, <laughs> we need to talk well. more about things like sure, this because I can see how much we can impact people's lives and the change begins with you. Don't yes, forget this. Yeah. And so, Jerry, thank you so much for being on this episode, and I look forward to seeing you on other episodes. Yes, it was it was very lovely to be here, and I believe that Nigeria will be good again. Yeah. And that will start with myself and okay. Joseph. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for staying tuned on this exciting episode, and we look forward to having you guys again on the next episode. Take care of yourselves, and say no to corruption.